Sweet, we're live. I will have to say, the one thing I really don't like about doing YouTube live streams is I usually listen to music when I do board repair, and I can't do that or else my videos will get flagged for uh, copyright reasons. So I got to do this in silence. I could always just wear my headphones. But anyways, today we have a couple of boards, but let me see if we can start off with one first. This is going to be a MacBook Air. It's an A1466. These models were made between 2012 to 2017. Uh, this one has not been opened up yet, so let's find out what's going on. Whenever I hook it up to my power supply, uh, it pulls nothing. In fact, the uh, charge light doesn't even turn on. So this could be just something as simple as a bad DC inboard um, or something much worse as a, uh, um, a bad system management controller. <laughs> okay, let's begin to open this one up. This one, the customer has said that they went to the Apple store and Apple had quoted them for um, just a full board replacement. I think it was about $700 is what they said. So let's see if we can fix this one and save the customer some money. I apologize if I sound a little rusty. I haven't done a live stream in a couple of weeks. I have to get my radio voice back. And what do we have hiding in here? I see a little bit of liquid damage around our PP3V. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This isn't a. This isn't one of the newer models. This is going to be a PP3V42G3 hot um, power supply. So let's check and see what's going on. And wrong setting. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, so this could very well be one of the reasons why we're not pulling any power. This whole area looks to be pretty damaged. So this whole circuit is what creates PP3V42G3 hot. And without that, it's not going to send enough power to turn on the system management controller, uh, which will then send a signal back to the charger to turn on a light. So this is probably our entire issue. In fact, right there, too, is going to be our system management controller reset switch. So with that having that much corrosion, there's a high chance that the reset button uh, that controls our system management con uh, controller is being held down in the um, off position. So uh, we got a lot of stuff around the backlight area, too. Something tells me, with the amount of corrosion that's on here, this one has been dead for a while. Let's pull out the board. <laughs> Very interesting how the Wi-Fi antenna is plugged in. And same thing with the eyesight cable going over the fan. This one did go to a CPR before it came over here. And from what I was told, the local CPR had informed the customer that before they could even tell them if they could do board repair, they had to do a diagnostic, which they charged a fee for. So the customer just wanted to find out if this was even a service, if the board needed to be repaired, um, if the local CPR could even take care of it. Um, now, this is just what the customers told me. I wasn't there, but I mean, I wouldn't put it past <laughs> in some of the stories that I've heard. But it sounded like someone just wanted to get paid for a diagnostic fee without actually opening up the device. Oh, man, that whatever. Oh, someone has actually already stripped that screw. That's going to be fun. Oh, jeez. It's either someone tightened this down harder than they needed to, or this has been rusted or corroded for so long that the screws are having a harder time coming out. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, we definitely have some strip screws here. So, 
I don't deal with this this often, uh, especially if someone else has already worked on it before, but it looks like whoever had opened this up before had used the wrong set of screwdrivers. Um, it looks like in this case, maybe they used a pinelobe when they were supposed to use a, a T, a, a Torx. In this case, it's a T5, Torx 5. Um, so I'm gonna have a hard time removing these screws. Hmm. Sound. Sound. Can you not hear me? Sound. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Is there something wrong with the sound? <coughs> yeah, these screws are really, really on here. Nope, it was me. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> I was gonna say, I know that I've done a stream with my microphone muted before or the battery dead in my microphone, um, but it doesn't look like that was the case here. Okay, so looking at the actual screws, what we're probably gonna have to do, I keep pressing the wrong thing in OBS, bear with me for a second. Yeah, that's completely rounded out. So someone has already just destroyed this thing. I really don't like doing this, but in desperate times like this, we actually have to take a Dremel and cut a flat line through the center of the screw so we can use a flathead screwdriver to remove the uh, strip screw itself. Uh, sorry about that. Drop my screwdriver. Okay. Yes, this one is a no power issue. Yeah, this one's starting to strip too. I really don't like taking a Dremel to screws on a logic board just in the fear of potentially cutting something, but it looks like that's what we're gonna have to do here. This one's not taking any amperage and there is a great deal of corrosion and rust around the PP3B42 generator. So it's not sending enough or any power to the SMC to send a signal back to the MagSafe port to even turn on a light. Okay, the thing that really stinks about this is the data. All right. Let's just go ahead and take care of this one. So I only doing any type of cutting with a Dremel. If you have a steady hand or experience with a Dremel and you wanna make sure you use a really, really thin bit. Like I use a diamond bit, uh, bought them in bulk. Very, very handy but it should be able to cut without going too deep. The um, cutoff wheels that are made out of sandpaper might be just a little bit too thick to cut through the screw. Also, since it is metal, you will want to use safety glasses. All right, for those that are joining us, I'm doing something that I've never done on stream before. There's two strip screws from a local uh, franchise repair shop, so we're going to have to actually cut a line through our screws with a Dremel so we can use a flathead screwdriver to remove the screws so that we can actually continue with the board repair. So it's going to get loud for a second. And just got to have a steady hand.
Okay, I'm gonna take a time out here for a second. So I went ahead and removed the screws, most of the screws on the logic board. But the problem with that is that the logic board is actually bouncing as I'm trying to put a whole, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? I'm trying to put a line through this screw here. So let me tighten this up and give this another shot. I apologize for the noise. So let's see if we can remove the first screw. And then we'll use the Dremel to cut the second one. All right, so it's hard to see, but I basically just cut a line right through the screw itself. And it might not be enough. I probably need to go a little bit deeper. Yeah. What I hate about this is it's literally <clears throat> the screw that's holding the SSD down. Okay, that looks like that should be enough now. Yes! And we're just going to end up replacing this screw. So I'll show you real quick what I did underneath the microscope. So, it wasn't directly through the center, but it was enough to where I can get a bit through it. And now I'm able to just turn this using my flathead screwdriver bit. And I was most worried about that screw since it was the one holding the actual SSD down. I only recommend doing that if you have experience with a Dremel. Now the next part is there's one right next to our EDP port. It looks like we're going to have to end up replacing that anyways because there is a great deal of corrosion. But with that in, in mind, I still need to be careful so I don't end up cutting the top layer of the fiberglass of the logic board. So, loud noise warning again. Let me take a look at this before I go any further. It's one of those measure twice, cut w once situations. Yeah, and I can't seem to get a good grip, so I'm going to have to cut a little bit more. We want to be careful not to cut too far because then we'll end up just cutting the head off of the screwdriver, but the body will still be in the thread itself. There we go. This one's turning as well. Hard to see because my camera is not focusing, but we are able to just cut a line through that screw 
And now we're just going to throw this in the trash and continue on with the board repair. Where are we at? This still cutting screws? Yes. Just finished removing the last screw. So now we can actually continue onward with the board repair. I never like doing that. That's always very cringy. Not as bad as some videos I've been watching lately where people are using box cutters to open up their phones. That is the shiniest underfill I've seen around the uh, SMC. This part of the board looks okay except for maybe a little bit of corrosion on the backlight circuit. So let's set our computer to the side so we can continue. And actually, just to be safe, I usually use a donor I.O. board. However, with the amount of rust that's in here, I want to practice this or check their actual I.O. board out on the bottom side just to make sure there's no signs of rust. the naked eye, this looks okay. And let's set all the screws to the side as well. Okay, let's do a quick visual inspection. I can't see anything because I still have my safety goggles on. There we go. All right, so is this corrosion right here detrimental? It looks like we do have some grossness, but it's mostly on this test point. We'll have to check these components out. But backlight is something we can take care of after the unit turns on. Hmm, that does not look promising. That looks like something got really hot and went through the board. Okay, let's go ahead and take a time out here and see what is going on. It looks like this board is an 8200165. And we don't need you anymore, 3U tools. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Flex Board View software created by Paul Daniels. I have a link in my description below if you're interested in purchasing the software yourself. And I just went ahead and pulled up my schematic. So what is this? It looks like there's a component on the actual board that doesn't appear to be on the board view. Hmm. Strange. Hmm. One second while I adjust my my viewing here. Okay, back at it. So the board view doesn't acknowledge this little thing. What is all of this? Well, with the amount of rust that is on this test point, I can say that it has a severed connection between this shunt resistor and this uh, MOSFET. Yeah, and 
all these test points right here just turning into dust. Hi, Pro Repair. Glad to see you too. It probably is just a test point, but I'm curious what the. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> okay, let's see. It's hiding in my tweezers, or I'm sorry, it's hiding in my Q-tip. And say I need to pull it out with my tweezers. And there it is. If it was that corroded, I can guarantee it's not good. So whatever it is, we'll have to end up replacing it. And where did it go? Okay, it's gone. Just to make sure that it's not bridging anything important. Yeah, so we're definitely going to have to run a jumper wire right here because this test point is just gone. Yeah, I haven't been able to do any live streams lately just because we've been so busy here lately. This past month has just really, really picked up. So I haven't really had the time to do board repairs live. I can really only do them after hours. If I'm doing them while we're open, then I just get interrupted all the time just to continue with the rest of the work that comes in here. So when the store is actually closed, I can breathe. No phone calls, no one's interrupting. It's just focus. All right, so we'll definitely have to fix that. But yeah, there was a little component right here, completely gone, and the board view is not even showing it. I'm curious if the older MacBook board view will show it. That is a MacBook Pro. That is not the right one. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, 3437. Nope, still not there. Whatever that component is, it's not there. So we'll end up just replacing it anyways. But before I do anything, just because this is, looks like that's actually going to be what powers SSD, might be able to continue onwards, but we're definitely gonna have to fix that part before we can boot into the um, SSD itself. So first, that should be actually a really easy jump uh, jumper. Let's go ahead and take care of that. So let's turn on our fume extractor. And for this one, let's use our micro pencil. Have you measured G3 hot rails? No, I shouldn't. Or I'm sorry, no, I haven't. <laughs> I probably should have done that first. In fact, actually, you know what? You're not wrong. Before I get too ahead of myself, let's start with the basics. I got too many board repairs to be uh, chasing rabbit holes before I, uh, I, I should take care of the power rails before we go any further into this. So, let's hook up our power, our IO board, and go to our power aliases. As mentioned with my visual inspection, there's definitely an issue around our PP3B42 generator. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. And resistance for, oh yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had a very sad experience with a uh, MacBook Pro 15-inch. It didn't take long to diagnose, but um, it definitely had um, a bad 
CPU V or phase MOSFET that sent a PP bus straight to the CPU and killed it. All right, do we have PP bus? PP bus G3 hot. Let's Turn on our multimeter, and PP bus is not present. All right. Is any power even coming from the... Uh, why can't I speak today? Sorry, I've been working a lot. I really can't think. Okay, we are getting 18.6 volts coming from the charger, so it is doing its job. Is it shorted? mega ohms so no short immediately can you put DMM under camera digital multimeter oh yeah 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 hold on I know I don't have one of those fancy multimeters that uh, Paul Daniel uses I'd like to get that It'd probably be the next investment but I want to check something real quick just to refresh my memory If I recall correctly, PP bus will not be present if we don't have PP3 V4 too. But let me just double check. Nope, that's not correct. PP3 V4 too will not turn on if PP bus is not present. PP bus has to go to a series of these MOSFETs before it'll make its way to our U7090. Put mine under the camera for now. Yeah, that's a smart idea. Okay, so let's check to see why our PP bus. <laughs> One second. Okay, sorry, I had to take a little drink there. All right, so Q7010, which is around all of our corrosion. It's supposed to send PPDC and G3 hot to pin 5, which will then send PPDC and G3 hot isolation to make PP18V5 DC and isolation R, which goes through our diode right here. So let's just go ahead and replace everything that is in this general area since it looks like crap. In fact, bam, you can see all. Actually, wait, hold on. That looks like a hole. That's a hole. That is our Q7010. So that's definitely the reason why it's not sending PPDC in to create our PP bus. So let's replace that, as well as just replace all of this mess right here. All of it. And let's adjust our temperature. And let's start off with our Q7010. Let's get it in focus first. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that side's all starting to melt. My hands are a little shaky tonight. I actually had a really, really late lunch. I didn't get to eat lunch until about 7 o'clock. So I'm still kind of digesting. Let's grab a donor board. This one looks like it's got a good Q7010. We got a little solder ball right here that's kind of helping me tin up these pads. Now that we have that MOSFET, let's move back over to our patient board. Quit shaking, please. All right, awesome. Now we get a little bit too much solder, so I'm gonna have to clean that up with my micro pencil. That PP3V42 generator looks like crap. So let's go ahead and start pulling this one out. We're just going to replace it for now. It seemed like liquid damage season had ended about a month or two ago, but I'm having a resurgence in them. And I think it's because, and th this is just an assumption, something to do with school. I don't know if um, there's any type of midterms going on right before the um, fall break. Maybe people are just getting a little stressed out and drinking more around their computer, whether it's coffee, tea, or your choice of alcohol. Definitely a little bit more than just the last month. Lots of solid state upgrades though coming in lately. For lots of iMacs. Not sure if it has anything to do with one of my iMac videos I did. R7080 is missing. Yes! I noticed that too. I'm going to end up pulling that from my donor board. Let's 
just tin up this area real quick. Now with the iPhone 12 out, definitely seeing a lot more iPhone 11s coming in. But I had to assume it's a trade-up program that customers are trying to get done. So far, I haven't had anyone say they had any issues with the, um, the error that says can't verify this Apple genuine screen. Seems like some carriers are still taking that in. doesn't really look like it's soldered well onto that pad, so let's see if we can touch that up with our micro pencil. Not really happy with that solder joint, so let's try heating this back up. Besides, I'm going to have to heat up this area anyways just to remove these components. Uh, C7094 looks pretty bad. I don't really feel comfortable with lead leading um, a capacitor that looks like crappy on the board. And why not? We'll go ahead and replace these two. We're already here. Okay. Now the problem I seem to be having is that this underfill right here is actually preventing the new PP3V42 generator from going in place. Let's give this another shot. Everything should scoot over to the left. And I'm just going to heat up this pad just so I can get a good solder joint on that pin on the bottom right. Alright, now we need to tin these pads. They're pretty oxidized, so we have to expose the copper and remove some of the rust that's on it so that we can put new solder in its place. It's 
see, what other components are we missing? Oh, okay, I'm scratching into the wrong pad. Right here is where we need to expose our trace. So we can remove the oxidation. Now let's tin up this area. Right. Let's go back to our donor board and just start pulling off some components. So I'm going to switch over to my tweezers now. And let me get my small tweezers, my Dumont tweezers. Ah, shaky hand, shaky hand. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just gently put the components roughly on their pads, and then I'll heat everything up with the rework station to get it aligned. My hands are just way too shaky right now. Do you have the FM203? Yes, I do. Very, very handy. It was a, one of the first investments I made when we opened up this uh, location, and I highly suggest using it, especially if you're going to be doing iPhone data recovery. Very, very handy tool for getting in those small spots. I put that on like an idiot, it looks like. All right, hold on, let's time out for a second. This is supposed to be over here. Yep. You are supposed to go quit shaking, please. <laughs> oh man, so bad. <laughs> oh wow, that is horrible. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to take a time out for a second. I'm actually overheating, so I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So we're just getting really toasty in here. Wasn't really helping out to my shakes. Too young to be shaking. The problem is I drink too much coffee. I need to exercise get normal energy that way. Come on. Go into your temporary placement. Ah, uh, yeah, my doc says no coffee afternoon. It's true. Okay, and then we got one more capacitor that needs to transfer. Told her she was crazy. Caffeine definitely is a vice that's hard to quit. Especially since it is, um, it is actually a drug. 
I mean, not to the same addictive properties as some other drugs, but... What I found is eating right and taking a lot of um, food that has that's high in protein is a great alternative to coffee. And I'm doing pretty well for a while on that, but then there's some days where I um, just don't really have time to eat well. And on those days is when um, I have the shakes the most. Okay, something tells me I didn't put that on right. Nope, I did put it on right. If I look here on my schematic or my board view, these are three are horizontal, then this is vertical. Vertical, we switch back over to our microscope camera. This is probably the worst looking mess I've ever seen, but we're gonna fix this real quick. Yeah, board repair is my drug. <laughs> there definitely is an endorphin rush getting something that originally a customer was told $800 or uh, $1,500 depending on the year um, to get it working for a fraction of the price or just even getting something working that another shop said was physically impossible to fix. It, it has its own sense of satisfaction. Make this look better. Everything is starting to wiggle into place. Oh, come on. Go. There we are. Same thing with you. Go into your home. I'm still not happy with that one joint down there. I think this is too oxidized. Probably is making a connection. Hopefully I'm not going to fight against myself for stri striving for perfection. I had one recently I made a video of. The owner ripped the DC in connector and some other stuff off of A204924. How? <laughs> like... How do you just rip the connector off the board? Okay. You're going to go into your home, and you're going to like it. Uh, it should be a little nicer. Okay, let's do this again. Oh, no! You didn't see that. Mulligan. Alright, so this just flew away for a second, but it looks like a, it stayed in the same orientation, so let's put it back in its home. This connection looks a lot more favorable. <laughs> I was like, did the, o the owner didn't try to repair this, did they? He said, yeah, the owner is an engineer and thought he could fix it. The important thing about anything that involves repairs, knowing your limitations. 
All right, I'm not even going to test out our SMC reset. I'm just going to replace that as well. switch back over to my micro pencil and what I'm going to do is with all the amount of gunk that's on there I'm just going to give it a quick tinning. I didn't beat him up too bad over it. Probably for the best because everyone's got to start somewhere and clearly they made the smart decision by contacting a professional. They could have just super glued it. Came late. What board is this? This is an 82000165. This one has been dead for a while, it looks like. The customer actually. Ooh, oh! Sorry. This one really smells when I heated it up. What I was saying is that the customer had already got a 2020 MacBook Air. Unfortunately, she'd already broken the screen. And as you guys may be seeing, the screen's for the new um, 2179s are not cheap. So for the time being, she is working using an external monitor and we are fixing this one up kind of as a backup computer until she can save up money to get the screen replaced. After this, I have um, an A1708 that is not powering on, and I found a little bit of corrosion next to the CD3215 chip, so I'll be working on that one after this repair. Looks like this trace may be gone. Yes, so we are going to... Oh, maybe? Maybe there's some hope? We may still have to run a jumper wire. But yeah, if I can get this one done in a timely manner, we'll be working on that. The last CD32, or I'm sorry, the last A1708 I did sadly had a hole burn through a CD3215 and ultimately killed the CPU. So that one couldn't be saved. So we did a board replacement. After the board was replaced, we found out the customer had actually broken their screen too. I have one of those on my bench I'm fighting with. This model, the MacBook Air or the A1708? actually switch over to the tweezers right now and do a little bit of dual wielding one two and oh, three Alright, this area looks pretty clean. A1706. Gotcha. Those I'm still fairly new at. So most of the information that I use for helping me figure out how to resolve that I actually get from LogiWiki. 
which is um, ran by Chris Shiny Computers. He has his own wiki that a whole bunch of technicians from the Rossman Group Discord have contributed information to. So I actually have a link in it in the description to LogiWiki. If you haven't checked it out yourself, I recommend giving it a shot. You can contribute any information that you'd like. It's all hosted by Shiny Computers. Chris is a very, very helpful technician who's been more than generous to host the free space off of his um, servers at his house, I believe. It might be at his shop. All right, let's find a good donor board that has a pretty clean looking SMC reset area. Most of these that I have have a liquid damage around the area or have already been used. Hmm. hmm. It does look like I pretty much have used all of them lately, so I'm gonna have to get some new donor boards soon. Here we are, found one that's in pretty good condition. Had a little corrosion by the PMIC, I'm sorry, <laughs> I hate that for you. Had a little corrosion by the PMIC, but was working. I replaced the cap in PMIC, test is still good, ultrasonic clean, and now 20 volts, 10 milliamps. Oh. There definitely is a little bit of oxidation, no immediate signs of liquid damage on this particular. These components should be good enough to get the job done. Off the top of my head, I don't really have an answer of what that could be. Usually in my experience, that has just been something uh, preventing the uh, rest of the computer from turning on. I think I've actually had some with a shorted PP bus, although I'm pretty sure you've already ruled that one out for me by now. Oh no, I think I am just ran out of flux. Can't really squeeze any more out of this tube. In one crazy instance, I actually had a, a A1706 not turn on because there was a tiny, tiny little tear in the uh, touch bar flex. The computer would turn on if it wasn't in its housing, but once I put everything back together, it wouldn't turn on anymore. I don't know if, if you're getting the 10 milliamps when it's outside of the um, housing, but I've seen that to be all sorts of random issues. Yeah, PP bus is good, PP3 V3 is good, PP5 VS4 missing but not short.
Yeah, and the thing that stinks about the PMIC on those is they're um they're hard to reball. Probably got crap under power management I, I see when ultrasonic cleaned. It's a possibility. Yeah, because if I recall from the last one I worked on, um, S4 is definitely going to be generated. Uh, a signal light comes from the CPU that turns on the PMIC, which then creates um, 5VS4. I might be wrong. It, it's been about a week. But I refloat ultrasonic again. No, ch no change. Just going to roughly put that there for the time being, and then we'll reflow it perfectly back into place. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get one more last squeeze out of this. After that, I'm going to have to switch out my flux tubes. I watched another video that said there could be an SO rail holding it down. Interesting. Almost like a, a shorted SO would prevent S4 from turning on? Yeah, no, this board is horrible. Like I said, it, it looks like it got liquid damaged a while ago. There's a lot of stuff around the backlight, so we're probably going to have to fix that entire area one up. So this one has definitely seen some better days. There's some stuff around the SPI. Pretty much, I just want to see if this one's even going to turn on before I address the SPI, the backlight, um, or that SSD power that seemed to have been severed. Because this one might be dead. Now, stop having a shaky hand. Okay, and I'm going to have to take a break here for a moment because it looks like I've just ran out of my flux. The hardest part I find is actually pulling the plunger out of the actual tube itself. reloading a cartridge. I also have a problem on my desk is 00165 with water damage, no V core. Do you have all your power rails going up to the V-Core? Ah, I apologize for that loud noise. All right, so I'm gonna have to pull this out somehow. Gotta be an easier way to pulling this out. Okay. 
Okay. Cool. Reloaded. Now, what's going to happen is as I continue to use this, it's just going to perpetually extrude flux, making a mess. And it will continue to do that for the next couple of weeks until I get down a third of the way of the flux. So for that, I will need a paper towel. just so that my flux can make a mess on the paper towel instead of my desk. All right, let's get back to work. Okay, so all of this looks like a hot mess. Let's just go ahead and heat this all back up. Twenty two volts at twenty two amps. Or twenty volts at twenty two amps. That is excessive. Either that's a typo or there's a serious issue with that board. area still looks like crap. I'm not too happy with this. Let's see if we can fix it up a bit. I think what I'm actually going to have to do is just touch it up with my tweezers on this side of the capacitor. All right, that's making a connection. So now it's time to make our jumper because I don't think that is actually touching. Let's probe this real quick just to see if we get a beep in continuity. We surprisingly do. Oh, there's a little bit of a connection there. Let's see if we can tin that up. I'm going to etch a little bit further up the tray so that there's more of a solid connection. Hmm, we're still going to have to do a wire, but that's enough enough um, connectivity to see if we can even get this board to turn on. So let's start off, oh, and last thing, this, this guy looks like crap. So let's remove this.
All right, that should be enough clearance to get our board to at least turn on. And let's pull out our fan just so we can see if we get fan spin. Let's see if we have any SMC activity. Uh, sorry about that. It almost looks like there's some crap on their max safe board. There is. Okay. Let's turn this on. We have a spinning fan and we have SMC connectivity or activity. So it looks like this is working. So now we need to figure out what we can do to fix the backlight as well as the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, that SSD, <laughs> it's so bad, I'm so tired. Um, SSD power line, yeah, that's what it looked like it was. So um, let's find out what exactly is going on with our backlight area. Oh, whoops, wrong camera. Move digital multimeter three inches to the right. <laughs> uh, can do. But first, let's switch over to our micro microscope camera and inspect this area. All oh, this looks like crap. So I'd be amazed if there even is some continuity across that fuse. We don't need backlight. <laughs> No continuity. So this is definitely bad. This looks like crap. We're going to replace that. Honestly, I just kind of want a windshield wiper method this and just replace everything. This coil would be okay. But, yeah, this all just looks like crap. So let's just heat up this board and just start removing things. Bloody hell, indeed. This one is pretty bad. Good thing is it's turning on now. And it's getting booting amperage. This one is going to have the most flux on it by the time I am done with it. All right, let's begin removing demolition. And this is why we charge a flat rate, just because some repairs we can get done in about 20 minutes. Others are going to take closer to, uh, let's see, I don't have OBS. Oh, okay, yeah, it says we've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes.
<laughs> that looks so bad. Okay, let's remove you. And let's remove you. Diode. And these MOSFETs may be okay. I'll leave them alone for now. We are in 75 minutes. Where did he go? LOL. Oh, yeah. No, I, I realized that you were helping uh, Pro Repair. He did just kind of vanish. There definitely is a lot of oxidized pads here, so let's clean this area up. The pad is still here. This one, you, isn't that bad. I don't like what the solder is doing though. This looks bad. It's almost like this flux isn't, uh, fluxing. <laughs> okay, let's wick up this area so we can get ready to put a new EDP port on here after we're done migrating out all the other components. I have three boards, mine that look about bad. This bad, I'm saving for videos. Good, good choice. Once I get a new desktop streaming rig built. That is my plan for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, is to build a new rig. This rig is actually stuff that I've just fashioned out of parts I've had lying around. Uh, but this is actually a computer, it's got a Core 2 Duo processor in it, but it's enough to stream with. Uh, the only thing is it's not enough to do more than one camera at a time, which is why there is some uh, some gaps when I switch back and forth between my cameras. I'd like to have all, all my cameras working at the same time. So that is my plan, as well as have a capture card for my the HDMI port of my microscope, because the USB mode that it's using, it's okay, but it's not as good as the HDMI. Yeah, so this is just extruding flux nonstop. I don't even have to uh, push on the plunger. It just keeps keeps on giving. Come on, buddy. You can touch up.
still here. Go to work. <laughs> yeah, same. I have a 2014-13 inch wrench. Now that I'm using only two USB ports and it hates OBS. Yes, so I did discover that with my 15 inch 2015. Um, even though it has significantly more processing power than this Core 2 Duo with, uh, I think it's a 60 uh, or 670 GTX. Um, this computer is still able to stream a lot better than the MacBook Pro. And what it was was the graphics card um, built into the 2015 I have is an AMD. And OBS just seems to naturally run better with NVIDIA since it has the, I think it has the ability to offload some of the processing uh, in, into the GPU itself. Dude, this pad is disgusting. I bought a couple of parts for my F FBM. What is that, a future build? Score to use GTX 1060, nice. A brand new Corsair case. So just need RAM, CPU, P. Right, let's start borrowing components. Now, the question I have for you, just because I'm so out of the loop when it comes to building custom PCs, the last one I built was in 2011, I'm still using it today. Um, would you, are you going to go with AMD or Intel? And is there a pro or con between the two when it comes to streaming? Um, I know that I think Intel doesn't do multi-core processing as well as Ryzen. Uh, I, I might be out of the loop on that, but what's your opinion? The build I have is an old, I think it was an 8120 Zimbezi processor. It was like one of the first octo-core processors you could have uh, purchased back in 2011. And it's still running today. Those were the ones that everyone said were horrible because they overheated, but mine likes to idle at a nice 13 degrees Celsius. With just um, a large heat sink, not even water cooled. So I got very lucky with the, my chip. I've always been an Intel guy, but Ryzen looks promising. I think so too. Ryzen or AMD has just had a really good uh, last couple of years. That and just from everything that I've read or heard from Windle at level 1 techs, um, they're not as vulnerable as Intel is as far as like silicon flaws. Uh, for instance, like Heartbleed from a couple years ago, that mostly only affected Intel devices. My normal PC has a third gen Intel i5 3770K. This is a dumb question, but I thought with the naming scheme, the 3770 would be an i7. I don't know if that's true or not.
Because I remember the 47, was it the 4750 Haswell was like the king of Intel processors back in the day. Oops, 3570. That's what I thought with their naming scheme. Because the uh, first number was the generation, second number was if it was i3, i5, i7, and then I think the third number was the clock speed. This one's kind of in a hard spot to reach. Come on, buddy. Go into your home. Please? Come on. I never use that computer. My admin wife does the inventory billing and listing on it. I haven't played any PC games in a while. Okay, so everything is partially in place. So now I'm just going to evenly toast up the area and push everything back into its home. Let's see if we can get the ground connection right there. That one is in a very, very hard spot to get to. Awesome. That looks good. All right, all those components look pretty well. Now it's time to actually put our replacement EDP port back on place. 
Let's see. I play maybe three to five times a month. Definitely a lot more than me, and I'm excited to kick my retina off the bench. Need space, lol. How big is your monitor you use for schematics? I think it is a 40 inch monitor. After we fix the board, I need to get a snack. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Don't, don't stop me from trying to get a snack. Yeah, I just use a television that is right next to me. Let's see if I can pull my camera out to see the whole setup. So, that's the television. That's my computer for ticketing. This is my second monitor for OBS and Discord. Let's get a replacement EDP port. Let's see, which one is it? Aha, here they are. Okay. Oh, you have two monitors. Are they both 40 inch? They are not. The one I use for schematics is, the other one is just a standard monitor, maybe 17. Uh, 17, 19 inches, one of those weird sizes. Alright, so time to replace the EDP port. So what I find to be the best method is to go ahead and solder our ground down on our, um, the side legs, the standoffs, um, and then we'll work on the individual pins. Right, everything scooted over a little bit, so let's move this back into place. I'll get popcorn after display problem. We will have an SSD not detected. You're not wrong because we had that one trace that went to the SSD that was definitely damaged. So I'm going to run a jumper wire on that part as well. Come on, buddy.
Okay, that's enough for us to continue for now. So let's run a B to flux across all the individual pads. And then I'm just going to take my normal soldering iron and just run a bead across and touch it up with my micro soldering pencil if needed. Come on, buddy. Uh, do I not have the right iron turned on? They are just a little bit skewed, but they're not coming in contact with the other pins, so they sh will be enough to work. We want we could actually just heat it up with our our rework station and should with surface tension pull everything back. I know it looks like a mess, but pro trust me, it's going to look a lot better. Alright, now that we have some extra solder on those, let's go ahead and just kind of clean up these pins. I really love this tip because it has a mound in the center of it, which almost acts as a, a wick. And so it's going to suck up some of these solder joints that we have bridged. Mm, we do have one pin that looks like it bent out of place, so let me see if I can push that back. When there's this much flux, the microscope doesn't really do a good job with lighting. At least the USB mode doesn't. Uh, let's kind of wick up that area and see what's going on with this pad. Okay, yeah. So this one pin moved over when I hit it with the uh, the ball the bead of solder. Should be able to just grab it and bend it back. Actually, I've never had this happen before. Come on. 
come on. I need you to just scoot on over. There you are. Oh no, the one next to it moved. <laughs> okay, there we are. Back in its place. Now, we need to separate these two. Somehow the pins crossed each other. Never had that happen before. Now, I'm using a different vendor for these IPX cables, so I wonder if it's the quality of the part. All right, let's tint up this one spot. All right, let's switch back to our normal our normal solder, soldering iron. Yeah, it almost seems like something with these pins, they're wanting to slide over a little bit more. So I have a feeling that these just aren't real IPX connections. Switch back. I mean, the connection itself even says IPX, so I'm curious if this is a genuine IPX port or if this is going to be some sort of a counterfeit knockoff. These pins are definitely moving a lot more than I've had in the past. Let's finish the job. We have these grounding parts and grounding pads. Just need a little bit of solder. And then just to give everything a nice solid flow, let's heat up this whole entire connection.
And so basically I'm just reflowing it so that it'll kind of slide into place. There we are. Beautiful. That's yeah, definitely a lot more aligned than it was a second ago. Now, these two joints could probably be touched up a little more. Let's fix that real quick. Beautiful. I am very satisfied with that. Now let's address our jumpers. So we have one that we're going to have to fix right here next to our SMC reset. After that, we're going to have one right next to our SSD power. So let me go ahead and etch a little bit more into the trace. looking at it, it may be a solid enough connection. Yeah, actually it looks like just Kind of running a bead of solder over that was enough to bridge that part that looks pretty bad. So, actually, that's fine. Let's move back over onto our SSD power. And I'm going to rotate the board. All right. So we are missing a line between the shunt resistor and this trace, which goes to power our SSD. Alright, so I'm going to have to stop for a second just while I clean my gloves. Put my hand in a giant ball of flux so everything feels like maple syrup right now. Alright, so when it comes to jumper wire, I like to use my micro pencil. Alright, both sides of the trace are tinned. So let's pull out our, our jumper wire.
need, so I got my jumper wire in the same orientation as my trace. Awesome. Now let's clean up. Three people watching. I think so. I don't know if it counts myself as one. It might just be you two. I appreciate you spending time with me this evening. Who is the third person? I think I might be the third person. Because the YouTube Live will sh show me a feed of what's going on, and I think it counts my feed as a viewer. I know when I first started streaming many months ago, um, I'd have no viewers, but it still said I had one. Pretty sure that was just myself. Either that or my wife's at home watching me. All right, so we got our jumper. And it looks like this may just be ground all through here, but we're still missing this one component. So I'm going to get a donor board and replace whatever that is because I don't see it anywhere on the board view. But first, let me put away my jumper wire for the time being. Yeah, yeah, that component's on here, but it's not anywhere on the board view. Oops, wrong camera. All right. So, that component looks like, hmm, let me see. So that component comes to this coil, and where else is it going towards? I want to say that's ground. In fact, actually, we can see this goes over here. Okay. Yeah, so that's ground. So this has got to be some sort of capacitor that's going to this coil right here. And let's see what that's connected to. Also part of our power for our SSD, PP3V3SO switch SSD. And if I had to assume that component is C32 or C3702. If we click on C3702, it's saying that it's underneath. It's okay, C3702 is actually something else. That is a different capacitor underneath the coil, which is there. So it is some sort of capacitor that is not on the schematic because we have this capacitor which is right underneath the coil and on the other side of the coil we have C3701 yeah so this is on one side of the coil that's on the other side of the coil 
So this would be on the same side as 3702, which it's not actually on the schematic. So we have an extra component that is not on the schematic and is also not on the board view. But let's go ahead and replace it anyways. So back to our microscope camera. Actually, before I do that, let me check my trace because I think I did have a severed line. Let's check the continuity between that bottom pin where the capacitor goes to and this coil. Okay, it's still there. Just wanted to make sure that way I didn't have to run uh, or etch any further into the board itself to expose the trace. So... Thank you, donor board, for all your parts. You've lived on a, a great legacy. Oh, huh. Tweezer's not even turned on. I still have it set to micro pencil. Okay, let's see if we have a solid connection here. Looks like it, and make sure that these two aren't touching. Okay, let's see what's going on. I think my jumper wire might actually be touching that capacitor. So let's fix that real fast. Okay, now let's make sure that this is not touching this. Good. We are good there. Put some mask on that afterwards to make sure that that doesn't touch each other in the future. But now that we've repaired that part, let's give the rest of the board a visual inspection because I haven't looked further down. Just to make sure there's nothing else wrong. Um, if I recall correctly, we actually had uh, some corrosion around our backlight driver. There's some crap on that component right there. Yeah, it looks like that might actually be bridged, so that's probably going to have to be ultrasonic cleaned as well. Or, I mean, the ultrasonic cleaner should be able to get that much. That little bit of gunk in between. Okay. Well, let's take a look over at our backlight driver. Just to be safe, gonna replace that capacitor. 
I'm just be ca I'm being cautious with this board at this point. Yeah, I'm glad I decided to pull up that capacitor because it looks like the pad um, that goes to the backlight driver is almost non-existent. Well, uh, looks like this backlight driver has seen better days. This is why this is a donor board. I definitely did not mess with this. Whoever did, though, looks like they had a lot of fun. Car wreck indeed. That one was pretty, pretty bad looking. Hopefully, after all this, the backlight driver itself is actually okay. Last little bit of touch up right there. All right, cool. I have a lot of flux on this table. But let's see if this one is fixed. I'm actually gonna have to change my gloves. They actually ripped on me because of how much flux I have over here. All right, so let's retire the donor board for a moment. Let's just go ahead and change gloves. I'm going to do a cardinal sin and install a logic board without gloves on right now. With everything going on in the world right now, I always wear gloves. However, my hands are all sweaty from wearing my gloves. So I'm waiting for them to get a little more dry before I put new gloves on. Let's connect the microphone. Right, and we want to hook this up just enough 
to where we can test that this even works with the SSD as well as the backlight. And then we're gonna we're gonna give it a very very in-depth ultrasonic cleaning. Okay, my hands should be dry enough to go ahead and put some new gloves on because this just feels disgusting. Let's hook up the IPD cable. Do the backlights. I've also had a lot more people come in lately with um, MacBook Airs that aren't wanting to turn on because of a little bit of liquid damage on the um, IPD connector. Um, it almost seems like there are uh, there are cases where people are liquid damaging their trackpad from cleaning. Let's see what's going on here. Why is this not wanting to slide into place? It's almost acting like that's not the right size. That can't be right. If it's not the right size, then the new supplier that I've gotten, my replacement DP port, definitely using counterfeits. It even says IPX on it. Okay. What is going on here? Oh, I see. I used too much. <laughs> I used too much solder right there. That's what's going on. All right. Well, let's just wake that up real quick. My solder ball actually overlapped and went inside of the EDP port. Okay. Yeah, liquid damage trackpad will kill the whole system for sure. Yep. Definitely have had a lot more of that coming in. I love fixing them though because you can typically fix them fairly quickly and it, it makes customers days because the local Apple store tells them it's going to be about $800. Well no, $500 just to even diagnose it with um, all the issues that are going on. And uh, we're able to get it up and running typically within an hour or two. Alright, is there any... Any more solder in here? I've never had this happen either. It's because I'm streaming. Okay. Let's see if that's enough to actually put our EDP cable in place. Wow. Okay. It went in. We just have a whole bunch of flux right here. And then before I actually turn this on, I'm just going to make sure that the backlight connection of the EDP port isn't shorted to ground. So that should be this one, I believe. Yep. No immediate short to ground. Cool. Right, let's continue onwards. Hook up our fan. Yeah, I've seen a lot of cringe videos lately where people have been using box openers to uh, work on their devices. It's awesome guy replaced the um, the front bezel on a new 
uh, well, I guess I'm kind of old now, uh, 1890, or 1990 MacBook Pro. Uh, the plastic part that actually says MacBook Pro was damaged, so they took, they took a rework station and a uh, flat blade or a box opener and just cut the plastic off the screen, and that, that hurt me. And then, um... <sighs> I've seen a couple of Jerry Rig Anything's um, disassemblies of certain devices. Uh, what was it? It was the the new LG. Oh man, what is it called? It's the one that that has a swivel on it, so it looks like a T when it pops out. I saw him do uh, a video lately. Um, maybe no, no, it wasn't on that one. It was a Galaxy Fold. That was it. And he quote unquote disassembled a Galaxy Fold uh, by taking a box opener and just start cutting into the OLED. And, uh, that just really hurt me, especially because someone who's probably trying to figure out how to take apart one of those phones might follow his uh, video to a T, but without watching it all the way through, and potentially open it with a box opener. That's a little scary. Okay. Let's find out if this is going to work and if we have SSD. Alrighty. Alrighty then. Let's see if we get fan spin. Fan spin. Light on charger. Looks like backlight may have just turned on. May have. Not. Still not working. All right. I figured. So the next thing is probably going to be the backlight driver, but let's see what... Actually, hold on. We did turn this on with the screen closed. So let's power this back on with the screen open. And see what we get. All right, still missing backlights. Clean my gloves because they're already covered in flux. But we do have the SSD showing. So we did fix the SSD power. Now we just need to get backlight working again. Yes, SSD is recognized. And I'm going to have to mute this real quick while I talk with my wife.
just had to check up with the misses. So yeah, well, I'm not getting any voltage on D7701. So if I remember correctly, we check that on our schematic. That means that we're, pr we're not boosting. So something is going on with our driver. Which would make sense with the amount of corrosion that was near it. Let's see. U7701. Let's see. All right. U7701 is going to take power from PP3V3SO and PP5VSO. So we got to make sure those lines are present going into U7701 as well as an enable line. Let's see. EDP backlight power management. Uh, we got to make sure that's present. Um, but yeah, it's not sending any power out to D7701. Uh, actually, before we even get there, on the other side, we were also missing... We didn't have any voltage on the other side to D7701. So let's see, it'd be PPVN SO switch LCD backlight, which is going to be this MOSFET. Um, Aha! <laughs> you know what it is? I did not replace the fuse. There's literally no fuse. So, yeah, I can actually see with the naked eye. Uh, let's see, did you measure with screen open? I did. Can't measure backlight with lid down. Yeah, nah. And there's my wife. Oh, who is this cutie on stream? Hello, it's good to see you as well. <laughs> All right, let's put our backlight fuse back in place. I removed it, and I did not replace it. Scratch away into this resin looking like substance. And we'll tin the area up and put our new backlight. It just looks gross. A fuse would help. The thing is, I remember removing it. And I forgot to put it back on. And this MOSFET, it's a little dark on this side. It almost looks like... Uh, we'll see. If it continues to not turn on, we'll check and see what's going on there. So let's turn up the area. Okay, and let me just clean up my area one more time. I am getting flux everywhere. I do have an admirer. She is my number one fan. She's also the administration of our store. Public relations, you could say. Yeah, this whole pad is oxidized, so it's not really catching solder. Normally when that happens, you just gotta keep scraping away and heat it up with a hot iron until it finally, finally gets some solder on it. Need more flux. I don't know what you're wrangling. making sure that 
There's uh, no shorts on either side of the lines. Now let's actually grab the backlight fuse. Mm hmm. I don't know about that fuse. I actually experimented and got some fuses from Mobile Centrix, but it looks like they have a different rating than the actual, um, I think it's called Light On? Let's see. No, I don't actually have the name of the manufacturer. I want to say it's Light On, uh, but the actual fuse has a P on it, and the P has a certain rating, and the ones that Mobile Centrix send me have an N, which is a different rating. I would actually have to go to mouser.com. Ah, shit, where'd that go? <laughs> Oh, there you are. I'd actually have to go on a mouser.com and see what the difference is between a P and an N. Okay. Because the boards originally have a P rating, so the N rating is going to be a different, different voltage rating, or I guess amperage rating, really, until it blows. Just want to let you know, our dock successfully did not roll and poop today. <laughs> That's good. I... I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I know the difference in the letters is going to be the current rating, but I don't know what the, uh, the uh, max current, the um, N, is going to be <coughs> than the P. Alright, so let's make sure there's continuity across that. Okay. And let's try turning this on. be power. And we have backlight. Just waiting for it to load. Sweet. Now let's see if I'll actually load into the operating system. Alright, perfect. So we were able to fix that SSD power line as well as the backlight and uh, the SMC issue or SMC reset issue as well, uh, well as PB3V42 G3 hot. So this one had a lot on it. So I'm going to do a quick quality control test just to make sure everything's working and uh, as well as give it an ultrasonic cleaning. So it looks like that this one is a successful board repair. So this one had a lot wrong with it. So what it was doing first was it was not showing any indicator on the charger as well as not um, consuming any current. So when we just did a quick visual inspection, uh, we noticed that there was a lot of liquid damage around our um, PP3V42 generator and the PPDCN isolation MOSFET, which actually consumes current from the charger, sends it to PP, uh, or it turns into PP bus which then turns into PP342 G3 hot, which will then signal the system management controller, which will then send a AC, I think it's AC or ACB or BC. <laughs> I think it's AC, BC, okay to the actual MagSafe, which will then turn on the light. Um, we also had a little bit of corrosion on the SMC reset, which was basically holding the SMC 
and um, a power button mode, uh, like holding a reset button, essentially preventing it from turning on. So we resolved that issue. Um, the entire backlight area was pretty much destroyed. We just wiped it, uh, replaced it with a whole new EDB connector, as well as a, a diode coils. Um, I'm sorry, we didn't replace the coils. Uh, we replaced a lot of capacitors around there. And then the last thing is we had to run a jumper wire on our, um, it was a SSD power supply, a 3.3 volt uh, rail, which sends power to even turn on the SSD. So this one had a lot of things going on. Let's see, congrats. How do you get so smart? <laughs> <laughs> and bam, you can do things except talking. You're not wrong. Um, when it comes to something this uh, complex, and uh, just naturally being tired, I uh, can't really word that well. So awesome. That was a successful board repair. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it here and uh, start stream for an A1708 that we have here. So you'll be able to catch me on that uh, here in a couple of minutes. So I hope that this has been informative and I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, thanks so much. Bye.